Workshop. My name is Rachel and we're using the Exploring Nature with Children curriculum to explore the autumnal equinox this week. Equinox means equal night. In other words, it's a special day where there's the same amount of daylight hours as there are nighttime hours. So that's what we're going to learn more about today. Are you ready for a quick game? Let's go. If you watched our summer solstice video, you might remember this game. It's all about how the earth moves because the equinox and the seasons all happen because of the placement of the moon and the sun and the earth and how they move. The earth moves in three different ways. Well, it is tilts, so it's tilted. So when I say tilt in this game, you need to do this. Tilt, it orbits. You can either run around or you can just do this for orbit and it spins that one's easy so when i say those words you need to do the actions if i say equinox you have to freeze and we'll see if you move or not so you'll have to judge that at home to make sure no one is moving are you ready let's play you ready amelia okay Ooh, back, back, back. right it's done there okay uh spin tilt spin spin <laughs> tilt all this equinox so don't move is anyone moving let me can see Ooh, pretty good pretty good yep yeah. you can play are you ready spin all this equinox Pretty good. <laughs> Tilt. Orbit. Spin. Tilt. Orbit. Spin. Tilt. Orbit. Spin. Equinox. Oh, they're pretty still out there. What about here? Very good, Amelia. Not so good. Right, one last go. Are you ready? Yeah. You ready? Tilt. Spin. Tilt. Yeah. Spin. All this. Tilt. Equinox. Oh, Amelia's got it. Oh, Eben, you're definitely moving. How did you do? Practice that a few times to remember those words and get ready for a craft yeah. now. For our crafts this week, we focused a lot on making things for a little autumn celebration. Here we use Greek yogurt and self-raising flour to make some little bread hedgehogs. We use sesame seeds and raisins and an egg wash to decorate and then pop them in the oven. And then later we watched an autumn movie and had them with some nice butter. A lot of Wiccans and Pagans celebrate Mabon where they'll think about thankfulness and abundance and the harvest. They'll decorate an altar with autumnal items and they'll often have a picnic as well to celebrate. In some countries in Asia, like China, they celebrate the Moon Festival right now. Another time of sharing and of thankfulness and having moon cakes. Look how delicious and beautiful they look. We had a picnic of a different sauce, but we did get a bit of surprise when we looked inside this mud pie. That's a western yellow centipede. It's one of the longest centipedes that you can find in the UK, but don't worry, we didn't eat it. While I'm waiting for my kids to bring me some more mud pies, I thought I'd talk about some of the things that these festivals have in common. Food is one big thing that these festivals have in common. Special food, meals together, sharing is another thing. Either sharing with those that have needs or just sharing time together with your family. The third thing is autumn and having lots of decorations linked to autumn. Oh, delicious, thank you. And the last thing would be worship. A lot of them involve worshiping a deity, a god, or even just mother nature and saying thank you for that as well. Oh, some more food, let me see. This is amazing. Mmm, delicious. Oh. Here's one of the friends that we met on our picnic, a centipede and a cow. But here's a challenge for you. Can you guess what these pictures are that are coming up? It's going to be quick, so get ready.
history. We're going to discuss something that sometimes called cultural appropriation. When you take something or borrow something or get inspired by another culture, but you don't do it in a way that's respectful. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that because when you hear all about these different celebrations, it might inspire you to do your own. But there are ways of doing that that are respectful to the people groups that have that celebration and there are ways of doing it that could be hurtful. We have talked about this before in nature workshops. So if you've talked about this before, that's fantastic. You'll have lots of ideas. Um, if not, just take it slowly. Just try out your ideas. Talk to each other about it. We're all just learning, so this is a chance for us to learn together about the best way to celebrate things like the autumnal equinox. So I'm going to give you a couple of scenarios and then you can chat to each other about which one you think is the most respectful way of being inspired by another culture. So imagine you've learned all about the moon festival and the moon cakes that people make and eat at that time. And you think, those sound amazing. I'm going to make some of my own. Oh, and because I want everyone else to know about it, I'm going to sell it to my friends so that they can enjoy it as well. So that's scenario number one. Scenario number two might be hearing about the mooncakes, getting excited and realizing, oh, that was such a special food for them. What's our special food? Chocolate cake is special food for us. Let's make an autumn cake and we'll make chocolate leaves to go on the top. And that's gonna be a great way of us using food to celebrate the autumnal equinox. What about that one, scenario number two? Which one of those do you think is the most respectful? And why do you think one of them might not be respectful? Here are some of the decorations that we made. We made some mini lanterns that we hung up and even though they're very simple they were really effective and then we made an autumn garland and on that we put some of the things that we're thankful for. Okay, are you ready for the next scenario? So pagans and Wiccans sometimes celebrate or thank the god Mabon when it comes to the autumnal equinox. Now, if you've seen pictures of him, I'll have one up here. He's got these amazing antlers. Now you might see that and think, I know, I'm gonna dress up as Mabon and I'm gonna go around and scare all my friends. Oh, and it's gonna be so much fun. And, or maybe he looks like a reindeer, so I'm gonna put a red nose on and you kind of make it into a bit of a joke. Or, that's scenario number one, or scenario number two, maybe you think, wow, that's really exciting that they have something or someone that they say thank you to. I wonder who I could say thank you to during autumn. It might be a god that you worship, or it could be, well, the greengrocers down the road help bring me my bananas every week, so maybe I should thank them, and maybe I should think about where those bananas come from and think about ways that I can honour the people that have grown those bananas for us. Which one of those scenarios is the most respectful, and why? Because it's kind of easy to see which one isn't respectful, but why is it not respectful? If you've got a grown-up to help you and a safe place to do it, then you might want to have a little campfire and celebrate with some toasted marshmallows. And if you can't do that and you need to be a bit more imaginative, then you can do what we did and make our own indoor campsite that required no flames at all. Sometimes it can seem easy to navigate whether something is a disrespectful way of celebrating something or borrowing from other celebrations. But sometimes it can be tricky. So I was thinking of some ways of trying to decide whether something is helpful or if something is harmful to a culture or a celebration. So that first scenario where I could either sell the mooncakes or I could make chocolate cake. Oh, well done. Um, there you go. Ready for your snack? You might want to think about whether the way that you're celebrating is taking away from a culture or a, or a celebration or is honoring them or kind of pointing back to that celebration. So are you taking something away? So if I was making mooncakes and selling them, I'd be taking that money away from maybe a, a Chinese family who was make it as part of their culture and sell it as part of their business. So I'd be taking something away. Or am I doing something that points back to that and said, oh, well, I made this chocolate cake and the reason I made it is because I learned all about these mooncakes. So then you're pointing back to the people groups that celebrate it in the first place. Does that make sense? Another way of working out whether something is respectful or not is thinking about whether you've taken something special and sacred 
to a celebration and turned it into something that's silly or hurtful. Dressing up can sometimes do that or the way we might um, take maybe a special dance that a celebration has and then turn it into something that's silly and forgets about the sacred parts of it. So when you're celebrating, if you're getting inspired by other cultures, think about is that something that's sacred and special and that needs to stay with that celebration? Or am I turning it into something that's silly or a joke and kind of spoiling the special specialness of that celebration? Hedgehogs always make us think of autumn so that's why a lot of our crafts are hedgehog themed this week. We made some cardboard hedgehogs and stuck on natural items for the prickles. We also found this recipe on Twinkle for making hedgehog biscuits. They were really delicious and we think they turned out pretty good. There are hedgehogs, they did not last for very long. one challenge is coming up to help you connect with nature and maybe connect with each other around you as well first things first can you spot three signs of autumn or of harvest can you spot two signs of summer that's like that lingering on a little bit I always feel like this time of year it's almost like a battle between the two seasons and some days it feels like summer is winning so can you spot two signs of summer and the last thing can you do one thing to celebrate the new season Three, signs of autumn, two, signs of summer, still trying to keep on hanging on and one thing to celebrate. Three, two, one, let's go. Here's a quick challenge. How many bugs can you spot on these leaves? Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.